You ready to get probed? Like a tricorder or something, Yeah, if, huh? you, if you get the right spot, it's a different sound. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'll, I'll well, turn that off We now. want a meep meep sound. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Meep meep. I even gave blood. Oh. Sacrificed blood to it. Oh, no. Get your new Hoovies Garage Superbird t-shirt, limited to only 250. Link below. Welcome to Hoovies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is my 1970 Plymouth Superbird, which I bought sight so unseen on Bring a Trailer for $130. Thousand dollars. These things are quite valuable, and that price did make it the cheapest Hemi Superbird in the USA, but it had a weird story attached to it that I actually kind of like. Now, these were built to be in compliance with NASCAR's rules back in the day. They had to build 1,500 Superbirds so they could race these at uh, NASCAR, but this one's actually special because it was literally a race car at one point, but it was wrecked. Apparently, T-boned on this side, spun out, and uh, well, they list it as a partial rebody on the Superbird registry, but it is a 426 Hemi car. So $130,000, really cheap for a Hemi car, but it has that ding on whatever they call the Superbird Carfax. And uh, it is cosmetically in really nice condition, but the seller uh, did not know of or did not disclose a ton of issues with this car, a ton of issues. And I know a lot of people, they go on these sites like Bring a Trailer, like several other nice auction sites, and they think they're getting some kind of special vetting process when it comes to these cars, but in reality, a little bit, but not much. They're still at the mercy of whatever the seller tells them the car is like. And in this case, a lot of things were missed. I mean, it's hard to be disappointed when there's a Superbird in your driveway in all of its ridiculous magnificence, uh, but there were some issues starting with after the sale. So I bought this thing on Bring a Trailer for $130,000, and then I contacted uh, the seller who sent me the financial information to wire the money to him, which I did promptly. We spoke on the phone, and then he started telling me about issues with the car, which you don't start telling people issues with the car after they buy it. You tell Bring a Trailer, so they'll put it in the ad. He told me about the suspension, how it used to be raked in a kind of dragster sort of stance that he fixed and put different wheels on it, but they needed to be adjusted. And uh, well, by needing to be adjusted, I mean, there is no absorption going on at all, a horrible clunk, and it basically makes this car undrivable. I'm gonna drive it up to the Car Wizards today, but uh, it's probably a stupid thing for me to do given the suspension is basically locked up at this point. So that was a bummer. But then the hits kept coming. So this car was listed with a bunch of vintage NASCAR paraphernalia that was really, really cool. A Richard Petty signed hat, which was a famous driver of the Superbird in 1970. He won the NASCAR season with it. So I was supposed to get a signed cowboy hat from him along with a bunch of really cool NASCAR memorabilia from the period. It showed up with none of that. The seller said, well, probably the shipper took it, which I asked the shipper, and he has no reason to take these things. And he sent me pictures of the car when it's picked up, including the interior that's supposed to be sitting in the passenger seat. It wasn't there. The seller said he'd follow up and look for it, but he's never followed up with anything. So the first thing I did is I got into this car and I wanted to honk the horn because it has the meep meep horn. When you hit the button, it goes meep meep, just like the Roadrunner. And well, sadly, that didn't work, which was a major bummer. And then I started driving the car and well, oh crap. So there's the meep meep horn, that purple thing down there. But as you can see, coolant started gushing out of the radiator, which I'm hoping it was some simple things. One, it could be overfilled. It looks like someone recently replaced the thermostats and may have overfilled it. Uh, or it could have been the cap, which I have replaced now with this generic cap. Hopefully it holds for the drive up or it could be uh, coolant pressure from the engine like a bad head gasket. And this engine, it runs pretty good when it's warmed up. I don't see any issues with the, the engine as far as runnability wise other than not liking cold starts. Uh, but the temperatures do creep up when you let the car sit and I'm hoping it's just because these cooling fans are not kicking on and it's a characteristic of the Superbird because of this crazy nose. In addition, well, a lot of things don't work. The climate control, uh, I haven't played with it too much, but I couldn't really get it to work. It's an aftermarket vintage air type system. A lot of the gauges, the speedometer, the fuel level uh, don't work. The temperature works because I see it creep up. The oil pressure, 
a little concerning. I'm hoping this gauge is off and not that it's low when it's hot, which that would mean a bad 20 something thousand dollar engine. And when you turn on the ignition, there's just this awful, horrible noise. You can hear this pump is running and it's really, really loud. It's like a vacuum pump to operate the headlights, which are vacuum operated. Basically this pump runs all the time. You can't really hear the engine idling over it. And it's like there's a massive leak to where it needs to run all the time. And well, it's really loud and really annoying. So that's a lot of issues for a car that was $130,000. Thankfully the car is in wonderful cosmetic condition to where I don't have to say restore it again, but it does need a lot of sorting and there are well, a lot of undisclosed issues. So Bring a Trailer was kind enough to refund me the $5,000 profit that they would have made on this sale um, just to show they don't want to make money on a bad deal like this. And they heavily noted the seller, which will affect him being able to uh, list cars again on Bring a Trailer. I've contacted him four, five, six times about the issues, and he just basically did the whole head in the sand thing, didn't even want to address them with me, pretended like... I, I was never sending the text, which is fine. He can be that way. And please don't go on bring a trailer and sleuth out his name and his address and go hunt him down and all that stuff. I, it's fine. If he wants to be like that, he can be like that. I feel like karma will bite him back in the end when you do things like that. I would prefer not to have any kind of interaction with someone like that anyway. I mean, they didn't even respond to say, you know, I didn't know about these issues. It was sitting a long time, which is an easy out. Just no response at all to repeated requests on if they even knew about these issues and, and what we should do about them. Uh, so with that, I'm going to attempt to drive this thing now uh, 30 miles to the Car Wizards. I've never driven this thing more than, say, a few miles away from my house. And uh, hopefully that radiator cap thing is uh, all it needs to uh, stop it from puking out coolant. And it seems like if I keep moving, it doesn't overheat because it needs the cooling fans at idle. So fingers crossed we'll hit the road. I'm still really happy to have a Superbird, so don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, I'm not upset. It's just the reality of buying cars online, which you should definitely be aware of if you're going on, say, a classic car auction website and you can't see the car in person. Things like this can happen, but things can happen at a collector car auction, uh, even seeing the car in person, since you can't really test drive them, you can't see hidden issues like a transmission being bad or something like that. And when you're buying a car in these kind of situations, you just have to expect you're gonna spend thousands on the car after you get it to sort it out or have it exactly the way you want it. It's, it, it's just the way things are. With that, wish me luck. Mm. Okay, up onto the highway we go for the first time. <laughs> In my covered wagon, basically, <laughs> when it comes to suspension. All right. Well, I don't know how fast I'm going, but it feels, it feels about 50, about 60 now. All right, not bad. We're up. As long as we don't hit a pothole and I bounce like a Neil Armstrong on the moon to orbit, I'll be just fine. Okay, okay. Alright, welcome me here. Oh, 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 God. Okay. I'm just worried because there's also, ah, there's also a clunk in the suspension, probably because of the way that it's been set up now. It might have hurt something. So any kind of bump in the road is, is just terrifying in this car, but it's working. I mean, I don't know how I can be sad about owning this car in any condition, <laughs> so I'm still happy. We'll see what the wizard has to say. Still have quite a ways to go though, so make it. You can do it. Oh, uh, the meat meat doesn't work. The wizard still knows I'm there. Long nose. Sorry. I need to look where I'm going here. Yeah. That's super nice. Yeah. Wow. Superbird. Turning radius is just <laughs> hilariously bad. All right. It's in. It's in. It's in. Is this the real thing? It's it's the real deal. Yeah, pop the hood.
That is... Why is it so loud? I have no idea why it's so loud, but it's a pump that probably should shut off once it has whatever vacuum it needs to operate the headlights and whatever else, but it just runs all the time and it's super annoying. Um, do you have a temperature gun by chance? Because I'm wondering if the, the temp gauge is accurate. I'm just too busy Googling over this thing. It, it, oh my God. So like you could tell people it's a Hemi, it really is. It is a real Hemi Superbird, although this isn't the original Hemi, obviously. It's a sort of a resto mod, but it's very rare. Hemi Superbird with uh, uh, some splooging issues, which I don't think it's splooging anymore, actually. I put a radiator cap on it, wizard, and um, yeah, it's not dripping anymore. Good, I'll go get you a temperature gun. Okay. Is that the sensor there? Yeah. 180, 185. So the gauge was like a little high, like two thirds, still in the normal range, but it was like in the two tens or something like that. So that's a good thing. I guess it's just a little off, but still somewhat okay. But there's other gauges that don't work. The speedometer, it doesn't work. The oil pressure gauge is the big worry though, because Seems like no matter what I do, whether I floor it, it's always at like the first peg on the oil pressure, like 20 PSI, which if that's true, then this motor's smoked, which I, I don't think, it, I don't, I don't think it is. I don't, I don't know. That's just oil from PCV gases. Yeah. So, so it's like at 20 psi, no matter if you rev it or anything? Right, it doesn't move, which makes no sense. Wow. Yeah, we definitely need to check into that. It's not running hot, though. That's good. Compress my suspension, please. Compress it? Yes, try and bounce it. What the heck? Yeah, I know. What the heck is... Something's seriously wrong. What does that do? You got, it's got a little appendage. Basically, there's no shock absorption. It just, just the tires moving. But otherwise, yep, yeah, try it, really try it. There's no compressing that suspension. And there's yeah. kind of a clunk. Something's not right, definitely not right with that. The seller told me it needed adjustment. That's not adjustment, that's something's wrong. We'll definitely need to get it in the air. This thing is amazing, though. It is in great cosmetic shape. So thank goodness there's not any hidden, you know, cosmetic snafus. But, uh, yeah, a lot of things that need sorting. But I think, I don't think this car is, like, gone by right. any means. This it's, is one of those scenarios, like, people bring me a $10,000 car and they put want to put thirty grand into it. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a car, it is worth the expenditure. Yep. Well, shall we look underneath? Yes. Kind of looks like an aircraft for this angle, doesn't it? It kind of does. It's like it's flying. It just needs wings. Yeah. Well, it has a big wing. It needs, like, side wings. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. What do you think of the gold wheels? I guess it fits the era, but I'm not a fan of gold wheels, really. I really like them. I, I think it's cool and different. You never see one of these that's customized and resto modded, which I thought was kind of cool, but I guess we'll see how good of a resto mod it is, huh? Yep. Look at that. Look at all that room in there. <laughs> so that's the hole to get to the radiator. Long way to go, but it seems to be doing its job. It's not overheating, which is nice to know. It's not, that's correct. The gauge is just a little, a little off. Did you do that? It's a duck bill, I suppose. Yeah. Well, shall we? Yeah. Um, well, what's that? Uh, is that leftover coolant? That's engine oil. Why is it up? front I don't know is there something up in here I see a line going in right there hmm what do you got it's like an oil cooler yeah oh it's uh it's leaking it's that's wet yes that oil it could be the loose lines or the oil cooler itself is leaking okay you need a rag uh, well you got your shoulder, I suppose. I'm not a rag. <laughs> well, it gets dirty when you work, right? <clears throat> like a rag. Thank dog. you. All right. Yes. Okay. Good. Much better. Anyway. <laughs> you know, people would probably pay money for this shirt now. I hope not. Uh, all right. So that's a pretty big leak that uh, 
So. Well, not not a hard one to fix though, right? No, that won't be hard to fix. Look, it's got a degreed harmonic balancer there, or main pulley. For timing, like yes. ignition timing? Yep, cam timing, everything. Use the timing light, old school, huh? Yep, got a remote oil filter. Oh. All the way up there, you see him? Yeah, I think I see an oil tank when I had the hood up earlier. It's a, the filter's way up. You can see it when we put it back down. Big Melodin. Yeah, very uh, resto mod eh? Yep. Let's check out these shocks. Oh, yeah, good question. Well, this one, first off, is blown out. Look at it, all the oil around it. It certainly is. It looks like it's been adjusted a lot. So in the old pictures of this thing, it was kind of slanted like this. Mm -hmm. And he jacked it up, and now it rides like crap. So, huh. Yeah, you can see where it was. Yeah, they cranked it. It looks like a good two inches at least. Mm hmm. And that explains why, I mean, the spring is cranked so tight right now that it won't physically move anymore. And also, it's at full extension all the time, which means when you do get it to move a tiny bit, it goes right back to full extension again. That's your clunk. Hmm. I think it could be fixed really easily with a little bit longer shocks. If this is the right height you want. Yeah, I like the height of it. So you're saying we need to make it two inches longer, whatever adjustable shock we get? Yes. Of, of whatever this, whatever mm -hmm. brand it is? It needs to have the right height, but also have up and down movement for the suspension to actually move. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so you'll have to take them out, measure it, and then match it up to whatever it is. Yes. A little bit of time there, but not the end of the world as far as the suspension goes, huh? Correct. Not that big of a deal, really. Okay. Well, moving on. Uh, it's There's more oil. More wetness. Is it, you're just verifying again, it's the same taste as the oil up front? Yeah, that's engine oil. Okay. It looks like it's coming up around the top. Let's we'll see what we see up These there. These headers are awesome. They're hot, don't touch them. Yeah, but they're cool. They are, they are really cool. Uh, oh. There's your oil pressure sending unit up there. See the little bell shape? I, I can. There's no way the camera's seeing it, but I see light reflecting on it. Yes. Let's see if it's wet. Up Looks on. like a UFO. Yep. There's oil coming out of that. I think that sending unit's dying. It's dripping everywhere. And would that make it not read accurately? That could. So I don't have low oil pressure in the engine. I hope not. What we can do is hook an oil pressure gauge to that, and actually get a true, accurate reading. Put your head down. You got, you got a little Gorbachev oil mark on your head now. <laughs> Do I? Yes. Where did it come from? I don't know. It probably dripped on me from up there. Yeah. Oof. All right. Well, we're moving to the transmission. I don't see anything leaking. I am concerned about the speedometer not working. Yeah. Here's the cable. It actually goes into the transmission. This is a Tremec transmission. Either the gear inside there's bad, the cable's broken, or the gauge itself is dead. But we'll definitely could find that out. Which one's the least expensive? The cable. It's that, please. Okay. And the undercarriage on this car is beautiful. So the story on this thing is it was wrecked and partially rebodied. So this was a race car that was T-boned on the track after it got sideways. Oh wow. And then it's dinged on the Shelby, or that's just a Shelby. What, what did I buy? I and Scott has, so it's dinged on the Superbird registry because of that, and they call it a partial rebody. Which do you see yeah. where it was? Well, this is where the frame. I don't see anything. Maybe this is a complete new pan here. Yeah. The undercarriage. I mean, it looks the exact same on this side. Yeah. I'm trying to see where something was spliced together. Right, right through here. But it looks the exact same on this side. It wasn't both sides that were T-boned. If it was rebody, did they do the whole body or just half of it? They called it a partial rebody. So I'm not seeing where it was partially rebodied unless it was done very, very well. Yeah, it was done. The whole car has been done very well. That's a nice beefy drive shaft. Lengthy as well for the length of this car. Yes. It needs better mufflers, louder ones. <laughs> you know, I kind of like the way it sounds. Do you? Yeah. Partially quiet? Yes. Other than that damn pump that will not shut up. Yeah, we definitely need to lower it and take a look at that. Some track bars. Rear suspension actually feels okay. Yeah, that's good. The shocks are not blown out. They look fairly new. 
It's got good ridge stainless steel braided flex hose there. It looks like it was done well. Here's your fuel cell. So it's not some cobbled together Frankenstein mess. No, I don't think it is. What a relief. Okay. All right, well, so you want to look into this uh, pump noise? Yes. I mean, it's so annoying. It sounds horrible. It really detracts from the car. Agreed. So I know vacuums needed on this car to operate a lot of things, like the headlights, the, the pods that open it are vacuum operated, but right. usually that's ran off the engine. So why, why do we need this noisy, terrible thing? The camshaft that's on this engine is very likely very high performance, and when you get to a certain level of performance on a gasoline engine, you actually don't have hardly any vacuum at idle. Really? Yeah, so there is some there. It's just not enough to operate things off of, so okay. that's the reason for the vacuum pump. This pump shouldn't be that loud, though, and it shouldn't be running all the time if it was no. that loud, I imagine, it right? It shouldn't be. Let's see, where's the... We can unhook this hose. I can hook a vacuum gauge to it and see if it holds. That works. You hear that noise? It had vacuum. It's working. It's just that it's so loud. We could just probably replace the pump with a nice quiet unit. Everything will still work. I don't even need to hook up my gauge. I know that's holding vacuum off of what I heard. Yeah, that was that was quite a whoosh. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Just shut that thing up. <laughs> just yeah, just take the vacuum cleaner motor out of this thing. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> A little more good news from the top here. You can see the oily. Oof. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty sludgy in there. We we'll need to see what's going on there. Hmm. There is one very disastrous thing that's wrong with this car. Though. Yes. Very big. The meat meat horn doesn't. The work. meat meat horn does absolutely nothing, and it is a tragedy. There it is down there in purple. We need to put power to it. We unplug this just to shut it up. Yes, we can. Okay. Otherwise, we won't hear anything over the darn pump. All right. It's still running. There's another pump. What? So that's not. Here, hook that one back up. Let's see. See if they work. They go together. Yeah. There's... Do we need two? No, we shouldn't need two of them. Well, let's shut them both up. So they both work on the same on the same hose. Because if I plug this one, you can hear that one change. Mm -hmm. Why does it need two? I don't know. No. Ah. Uh, ah, much better. Another thing is the fans are running. You can hear the fans. You can finally hear them now, huh? So they do work. I was wrong about that. You ready to get probed? Like a tricorder or something, Yeah, huh? if, you, if you get the right spot, it different sound oh okay gotcha I'll, well, I'll turn that off we now. want a meep meep sound yeah let's see what we got here <laughs> there it is there it is meep meep I even gave blood oh sacrificed blood to it oh no so it works it does work it's just not working up there maybe a blown fuse or so it's not a disaster no. The motor seems healthy. It's mm -hmm. not overheating. It probably doesn't have low oil pressure. Um, it doesn't seem to be leaking coolant anymore, but it is leaking from other places with oil. The suspension, uh, that's a thing. We're going to have to look up that. Yes. But electrical issues, it doesn't seem that bad. It's, it's really not. We'll see when we end up in the office, I suppose. Mm -hmm. What you end up shopping for. Yes, that'll be a surprise. Uh, sperm? Sperm whale oil? Yeah, this is particularly suited for oiling precision instruments. Uh, 
what what instrument are you trying to put sperm oil on? Well, I think we could use it in the shop. It would be really good for lumen different <laughs> This is a callback to the old Mopar I had, the 66 Imperial. Yes. Where in the owner's manual it said they treated the leather seats with sperm whale oil. Yes. Uh, it was weird then, it's weird now. Okay, uh, how Should much I is that? For a grand, I can get a case of a bunch of them. $1,000, okay. I like the price though, Wizard. That's, that's good. Realistic. Yeah. The price isn't bad. I think we could really use that in the shop. It would be great. Uh, interesting, yeah, oils and materials charge. <laughs> the, the sperm oil charge. Anyway. <laughs> Are you making any donations today? No, no. No? no? Okay. Back to the super bird. Yes. I got a price list for you. It's actually not that bad. We can replace those coilovers with a two inch longer set of Ibox spring, coilover spring set, twelve fifty. One thousand two hundred fifty dollars? Yep. That two inches will make all the difference, eh? Yeah. That oil's gonna come in handy with that. You started it with the Okay. <laughs> so twelve hundred and fifty dollars, all right. Yeah. Yeah, so just new adjust those shocks are pretty expensive then, huh? Yeah, the most of that, probably ninety percent of that is the, the shocks. But it just you just unbolt them and put the new ones on. It's not cool. hard to do. Okay. So. All right. Oil pressure sender, remove and replace with a new one, 100 bucks. Great. Horn, <clears throat> horn repair, wiring or the horn button on the steering wheel, 100 bucks. It's not going to be very extensive. It works. The meat neep works. Yes, it drew some blood, but it works. It did draw some blood. Yeah. You want me to kiss it and make it better? No. Okay. I'll put some oil on it when it comes in and might heal it up. Okay. For your vacuum pumps, they actually make one that's made for brakes. Mm. Vacuum boosters and it's silent, dead silent. Mm -hmm. But it's expensive. Really? Fifteen hundred bucks to install, labor everything to install a silent vacuum. Does that get me down to one pump though? Because yes. right now it's a tandem. Like, makes no sense. It doesn't. There's two tanks. Yeah. Weird. Okay, fifteen hundred dollars for silence. That it's expensive, but yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Oil cooler leak. One to two hundred bucks is probably just a seal, or it probably could be loose. That could go higher if the oil cooler itself is leaking, but I don't think that it is. All right. Speedo repair is very likely just to gear or the cable. Two hundred bucks. That'll do. All right. Oil change. I'm gonna give you a special deal since we're we've got plenty of money here. I can send my order in today. <laughs> All right. A dollar ninety-seven for a, a dollar. No, okay. All right. I like. The, I, you must like this car. Yes, it is a very cool car. All right. Usually, when I bring him like a Bentley or something, it's it's brutal for multiple reasons, but also you don't like it. But okay. Grand total thirty-four hundred dollars. Thirty-four hundred dollars. Well, I mean, I don't really owe the seller an apology because he didn't disclose all of these issues to me, mm -hmm. and they're definitely things that. Someone would have noticed and known about right. the shocks, the suspension, the the speedometer not working, uh, leaks. You know, there's some pretty decent leaks there. Yeah. But Bring a Trailer did refund me their fee, which was more than that on the car. Okay. Just to be a stand-up organization. So, mm -hmm. I guess it's a win. I I guess. Well, the car's definitely worth thirty-four hundred dollar investment. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, go to town. I'm gonna leave it with you and. I guess I can drive something home. Maybe the Ferrari 456, is it done? Yeah, we actually just finished it up now. Nice. I'll get my order going. All right, thank you for watching. And sorry about the sperm oil thing. It's weird, I know. Get your new Hoovies Garage Superbird t-shirt, limited to only 250. Link below.